Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we are going to be doing some medical physics. If you're following the OCR Physics A specification, this is the medical physics portion of module 6. So let's start with the production of x-rays. As we know, x-rays are highly energetic EM electromagnetic radiation. They're extensively used in medicine, but how can we actually produce x-rays? Well, let's explain that. First off, we need a very, very high voltage power supply. Now we're talking about of the order of thousands of volts, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of volts. For an x-ray to be produced, normally we would need somewhere between 50 to about 150,000 volts. The high voltage power supply is connected to a heater, which is also known as the cathode. Now, this is made of out of a metal which would normally release electrons and as they as the metal releases electrons they will be accelerated towards the positive end of the circuit where you are going to find a target metal this uh, portion of the x-ray tube is also known as the anode once the electrons are decelerated, they lose a lot of energy and only 1% of their kinetic energy is converted to x-rays. The x-rays will be emerging out of this window. And uh, this beam over here, let me just highlight this, is actually your x-ray beam. Now, let's summarize what we have just said. Once again, at the cathode, also known as the heater, the electric current heats a filament. This releases electrons. The electrons are then accelerated towards the target metal, the anode. They're accelerated by the potential towards the positive end. And when the electrons strike the target, they're rapidly decelerated, they rapidly lose energy and x-rays are emitted. This is a process which is also known as Bremsstrahlung, which uh, comes from German and um, it means breaking radiation. One final and really important part of this is that only 1% of the kinetic energy of the electrons is converted to x-ray energy. So this is not a very efficient process and it comes up very, very often in questions. So if we were to ask to calculate the x-ray energy, for instance, what we need to make sure to find the total x-ray energy will be to find 1% of the kinetic energy, which is sometimes given in the question. But once again, only 1% of the kinetic energy of the electrons is converted to x-ray energy. So guys, let's apply what we have just learned to a little problem. Let's calculate the minimum wavelength of an X-ray when a 100,000 volts or 100 kilovolt potential is used to accelerate the electrons. Now, if, if an electron produces an X-ray and about 1% one of, one of the total will do, the electron is going to have a lot of electrical energy. So the electron energy in this case, so we just write that over here, the electrons energy is going to get converted to photon energy. Remember the energy of the electron is going to be given by EV. Uh, for instance, if an electron goes through a potential of one volt, it's going to acquire one electron volt. If it goes through a potential of five volts, it's going to acquire five electron volts of energy. If it goes through a hundred thousand, a 100 kilovolt potential, then it's going to acquire a hundred kilo electron volts of energy. 
I'm going to set that equal to the photon energy. As a revision, we have two formulae for the photon energy. Let's just write them down over here on the side. One of them is hc over lambda. The other one is, of course, that the energy of a photon is hf. Now, because in this case we're looking for the minimum wavelength, I'm going to be using this equation. If they were asking us for the maximum frequency, for instance, I'm going to be, uh, I would have used this one over here. So anyways, let's set the electron energy, which is 100 kilo electron volts to hc over lambda like that. Let's just do a quick conversion. So 100 kilovolts is actually going to be 100 times kilo is 10 to the power of 3. Multiply that by the elementary charge, so 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, and this will be equal to hc over lambda. I can directly rearrange for lambda now, and we're going to get that lambda is equal to hc, uh, h times c divided by 100 times 10 to the power of 3 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, like so. And uh, let's plug in some values as well. Let's get rid of this object here. And let's try again. So H is 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. This is just Planck's constant. C is 3.0 times 10 to the 8. I'm going to be dividing that by 100 times 10 to the power of 3 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. Now, if I was to plug this into a calculator, what I'm going to get is about 1.24 times 10 to the power of minus 11. So let's just write this down up to two significant figures. So 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters, which is a tiny wavelength way beyond the uh, visible spectrum. So we know that our answer makes sense as well. Okay, folks, well, this was our quick online lesson on the X-ray tube and some of the most common questions that we, can, we, go, we could get. Normally, you're asked to explain how it works, and we're also given a similar problem with uh, the calculation of either the minimum wavelength or the maximum frequency of an X-ray. Hopefully, this video has been useful. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck in your revision.